work to the P Pistons. So much skill. I was on my slick rig like Joker. Don't hurt me again. Don't, don't, don't hurt me again. Let's start the show. He got game. Mm. Jalen Rose, I'm David Jacoby. We are Jalen and Jacoby. What is it that we do? What up, though? We give the people what they want. We have an update on the number four pick in the NFL draft. We have an update on Russell Wilson's future with the Seahawks, but we start with Joel Embiid and the 76ers just absolutely having their way with the Boston Celtics. What did you think of the performance of Joel Embiid last night? He's playing like an old school Chevy, and I appreciate that. Because look at that, old school post moves, getting it on the block, jab step, jab step, pump fake, drive the middle. And how about the double step back at the end of the game for a seven footer? Get a small player on you, punish them. And that's what he's doing, I appreciate that. And he truly exposes, and I know the Celtics have dealt with a lot of COVID-related missed games with their big up front, but he really exposes when these two teams play, why Boston big man production is gonna cost them when the postseason comes. They've mm -hmm. struggled. Now, Robert Williams has shown promise, and I believe that guy can be somebody that they can rely on moving forward. And Taco Fall, you know, the big fella is a fan favorite, but I, I, I still need him to ball a lot better. You know, Wagner is my guy from Michigan. But they're going to need some consistency at that spot, Jacoby, along with Kimba Walker. If the Celtics are going to do anything, I want to celebrate the Sixers being tied with the Nets for the best record in the East. But it's hard to ignore that the Celtics are struggling in that conference when you start to look at the standings. And they had no answer for Embiid, but they also turned the ball over a lot. I mean, this wasn't all just good defense from the 76ers. It just seemed like they had, I mean, Smart has six turnovers, and the Celtics as a team had 22 turnovers. This Boston team is just not only below expectations, but way, way below expectations. When you look at the standings in the East and you see where Boston is, that is not where any of us expected them to be at the beginning of the season. But right now, we're going to focus on the Western Conference because the Warriors and the Bucks game went down to the wire at the very end. The ball was kind of bouncing around. No one really knew where it was going, and it ended up getting blocked by Andrew Wiggins right here, and the Warriors came away with the win, and Steph Curry was cooking again. What do you think about these Warriors as they hover around that playing position in the West? Good to see Wiggins making plays. And when Oubre was struggling earlier in the year, you know, I came onto this show and told everybody to calm down, that he was gonna be a productive player and against the Hawks, and in this game, he played really well. But the highlight from this game, and obviously you wanna see Wiseman be productive and catch some lobs and give you some rim running. The elephant in the room is that the Golden State Warriors are gonna be a part of the playing game, which mm -hmm. means Steph Curry, the greatest home run hitter in the history of the NBA for three-point range is going to get a chance to not only play himself into the playoffs, but possibly upset one of these top seeds. Imagine you're the Suns, you're the Jazz, and you get the Golden State Warriors and a hot Steph Curry in the first round. That's what stood out when I watched this game, Jacoby. Now the playing situation is a little complicated. Seven and eight would play each other, and nine and ten would play each other. The loser of seven and eight would then play the winner of nine and ten for the eighth seed. Now that could mean that the Jazz or the Suns, as you mentioned, end up playing the Warriors in the first round. And whenever you have Steph Curry, you have a chance for an upset, even in a seven game series. It's gonna be a lot of fun to watch how this all ends up with the Mavericks playing really well and the Lakers kind of sliding. We could be in a position where the Lakers have to win to get in the playoffs, but we will see. And right now we focus our attention to the NFL draft and Jalen, we featured Kyle Pitts on this show because we're no, <laughs> we know that there's gonna be three quarterbacks, one, two, and three, but the number four spot is the Atlanta Falcons. They need to take Kyle <laughs> Pitts there. And Schefter's saying that they're looking at maybe trading down. The Atlanta Falcons need to take Kyle Pitts at number four. They should not trade down. What do you think about that? 
game changer. And just physically, you get a chance to line him up in a huddle with Julio Jones? Wow, Jacoby. Talk about putting fear in the defense. And the tight end position has evolved. This guy's mm -hmm. gonna be able to line up in so many different places and be a contributor in so many different ways for their team. I like this for the Falcons. They really should not trade out of this spot, but any other team could give up a lot because Kyle Pitts is that sort of a game changer. You could put him at receiver. He scored 12 touchdowns last year in about seven and a half games. He is going to be in the discussion with Waller, Kittle, and Kelsey as the best tight ends in the game. I'd say this season, that's how impactful this young man should be. And Atlanta Falcons and Atlanta Falcons fans, please, please, please do not mess this up. Just take the short thing. Kyle Pitts. Moving on. Russell Wilson has been in the news a lot this offseason about whether or not he wants to leave or whether or not he's going to stay and what the Seahawks are going to do to help him. Well, Carlos Dunlap and others have said that Russell Wilson told them that he is going to stay with the Seahawks. Jalen, what does that mean to you? It's like, what you want to do, what you want to do. So here's how this works. We all under contract to play for this season. After that, all bets are off. So, in translation, yes, what he said is accurate. He is there to stay, but for only this season. That's how I interpret this. Until they protect him better, do something along the offensive line. What do you think? I, see, here's how it works. Your girlfriend doesn't come to you and say, you know what, I'm thinking about breaking up with you in a month. You know what I mean? Like, it, 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 you tear that band-aid off. And I feel the same way about Russell Wilson. He's like, yeah, I'm staying. Right now I'm staying. I'm definitely staying for this season. I'm definitely going to stay for this season. He's like, I'm staying, Mr. Dunlap, so you should sign that contract. I'm staying for these 17 games, and we will see what happens after that. Because I, like you, do not believe that Russell Wilson is long for this franchise, especially if they come up short in the playoffs again like they did last year against the Rams at home. Well, we've got... Some more bad news for Texans fans and Deshaun Watson. Two of the 22 accusers of sexual misconduct at the hands of Watson have come out and spoke publicly. And the NFL is taking it very seriously. And they're investigating. And Nike has now suspended their relationship with Watson. Jalen, with all of this going on, do you think Watson will play on an NFL field in week one? I don't, Jacoby. I think at this point, it's best for all parties involved, Deshaun Watson, the NFL, and the obviously with the accusers, is to take a step back and allow him to get this sorted out before football even becomes the focus. As these numbers continue to add up, I think that's the best course of action for each side. Yes, as the more details come out and the more I read about this, just the more serious and disgusting the accusations are against Watson. I think that through the investigation and through the civil suit, the NFL will eventually end up suspending him. I don't know if they will, but I think they will eventually, and he will not play week one, whether it's for the Texans or another team. Jalen, moving on, last night in the Raptors-Lakers game, we had something that you like to call a hold me back moment. There's OG and Anobi straight up wrestling with Sh being at three at 18 years of age. Some people may consider that high because he's ahead of a lot of other people that are more accomplished. But ain't this his home? Ain't this his home turf? Ain't yes, he one on one? Okay, so we gonna keep it moving. Keep it moving. We keep it moving. We keep it moving. <laughs> Tom Brady is launching an NFT company. Keep it moving or hit the brakes. I want to hit the brakes on this. Okay. Tom Brady is partnering with some others. And he's launching an NFT company. Now, Jalen, before I even attempt to explain what an NFT is, I'm going to say NFT is like TikTok for me. I understand it's important. I understand it's popular. It's something that a lot of people are into, but I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'll be investing in stocks just like my granddad. Well said, well said. I'm going to be following this one closely. But Tom Brady been about that bread recently, and I ain't mad at him at all. The GOAT at quarterback still winning Super Bowls, going to Tampa, just got a new deal. He got bread to invest. He got money to blow. So, of course, he's launching an NFT company. You surprised? No, not at all. Moving on. The Lakers and the Raptors had a hold me back moment. Keep moving and hit the brakes. We're not promoting violence. We're just having some fun. 
Hit the brakes. Hit the brakes on this one. Jalen, just watch this play and just commentate it for us. Just commentate it. Give us your Marv Albert. So basically, go to the basket, gets fouled, and then you straddle the other guy. And at that point when you stand up, and then you got to stand up really fast, and then it becomes, uh, uh, hold me back. Because Gary Trent just got traded there, and he been balling. He ain't trying to punch mm -hmm. nobody with those right hands. That three been money. And Montrez Harrell getting nice minutes. Now that uh, LeBron James and AD's out, he ain't trying to necessarily be missing no games. So we'll get ejected for the day. And OG on Ananobi always is a physical presence for the Raptors, who have been really getting some great contributions from some of their new players. My favorite part about this exchange is after the game, Harold was asked if he had beef with anybody on the Raptors. He said, I have beef with everyone not in a Lakers jersey. That was my favorite quote. I have beef. He's like, the refs, the vendors, the people in the stands. He's like, if you're not wearing a white and blue Lakers jersey, I have beef with you. Big Get shout your to money, Trez. Dennis that was a lot of fun. Get your money, Dennis Schroeder. Moving on to another game in the NBA last night, the Hawks eked out a win against the Pelicans. Keep moving or hit the brakes. Oh, man. Hit the brakes. Trey Young had 30, and the Hawks were absolutely on fire from three in the third quarter to get the win. What do you think about their performance ever since they switched coaches? I think they switched coaches, and it coincided when Bogdanovich returned. So now as ownership, you give yourself a chance to truly assess if Nate McMillan could do this job which we know he could because we predicted that this would happen when they hired him. And then you acquire Lou Will, and how fantastic has Trey Young been? Mm -hmm. Scoring the ball, getting assists. The Atlanta Hawks, peace Boom. up, a town down. Look at him in the four spot. I mean, uh, if you would have showed me spot. these standings before the season, I would say, all right, well, three people got hurt on the Celtics. I don't know what happened to the Hawks. But look at these standings. This is wild. This is going to be real fun to see who ends up playing who in the playing game. Are the Knicks going to make the playoffs? There is so much going on in the East right now and still to be seen in these last 20, 25 games. I can't wait for that drama to unfold. But we move on. You've got the old English D on your hat. We've got a uniform news. Hit the break. Major League Hit Baseball. the break. Hit the break. We'll hit the brakes on this one. So, the Red Sox unveiled some new uniforms and they're Boston Marathon themed. But why do they have to look like this? Like, what? What? <laughs> what is that? Just put a patch on the red uniform. You a guy easy fan? Why you do tell they me. Look like, like you North tell Carolina me. You Carolina and UCLA. Like, what is this? What is this? You know what, Jalen? This is LeBron's fault. <laughs> Ever since LeBron became part of the ownership group, now they got yellow uniforms. Now they're looking like Big Bird. LeBron James is trolling with this one. Moving on. Sticking with baseball, we have some news about your Detroit Tigers. Hit the Keep moving. Hit the brakes. Akil Badu hit a walk off. Two out single to give the Tigers the win in the 10th inning. Jalen, you getting excited about your Tigers this year? Absolutely. The coldest Badu since Erica. You see him at the plate. It goes on and on and on and on. <laughs> and by the way, this bat is signed by the legend, Willie Horton. This is what we do here. It is so cold in the D. Jalen, uh, we have some news. <laughs> about potentially legal gambling right here in New York City. Keep moving or hit the brakes. Hit the brakes. New York has officially approved legal online sports betting, which means I don't have to go to New Jersey to lose money on the Chiefs in the Super Bowl anymore. I'm so excited about this. I'm so excited about this. I'm just not even gonna tell my wife. I'm not even gonna tell my wife that I'm big gambling on sports as much as I'm about to be gambling on sports. And also, this is just what happened for Detroiters and Michiganders used to always go to Canada to gamble. Mm -hmm. So we started having casinos. This is the exact same thing. Instead of you donating to Jersey, you can now donate to New York City. I wish Mahomes won the Super Bowl. Moving on. <laughs> Francis Ngannou has proposed a very interesting future opponent. Keep moving or hit the brakes. And hey man, this show is way too good, man. Hit the brakes. We'll hit the brakes on this one. Francis Ngannou, no one wants to fight this man. He is terrifying. So what did he do? He decided that he wanted to fight Tyson Fury in the boxing ring. Do you think this potential mixed martial arts boxing matchup could actually happen? So I want to pay homage to both of these gladiators. And you know I was at the Tyson Fury fight um, in Las Vegas before COVID even 
you know, kicked off or whatever. And I got a, 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 a profound respect for his skill and his size. And mm -hmm. obviously we have that for Nganu as well. But I think Tyson Fury might put them hands on him. Might pepper him, Jacoby. That's what I believe. I saw what he did to Deontay Wilder. I believe that's just a different sport. What are your thoughts if they got into a ring to fight one another? I think these should be two fight deals where one is in the octagon and one is in the boxing ring. Because whoever is <laughs> going to change sports is going to lose. We saw it with Conor McGregor. We celebrated Conor McGregor for lasting as long as he did against Mayweather, but he really didn't have a chance. And I think Ngannou is one of the scariest people I have ever seen to be in professional fighting. It just seems like I can't picture him losing unless he does switch sports because Tyson Fury has been boxing his whole life and he is quick and he will win if it ends up in the boxing ring. See, the reason why Floyd considers himself the GOAT, that week of the Conor McGregor fight, you know what he was doing? He was launching his strip club. And when most people were going to bed, training, and not doing whatever they normally do, the champ who's now 50-0, TBE, he was launching his spot. He wasn't taking Conor serious. He was carrying Conor. He wanted us to believe that they could fight again. He let it go those rounds. Jalen, there is a college in your home state of Michigan that is opening break. something called <laughs> opening something called the Cannabis Center of Excellence. Jalen Jen Rose, will you be signing up to study at the Cannabis Center of Excellence? Here's Don't what I'm fired. about to be doing. Here's what I'm about to be doing. I'm about to go there right now. I'm about to go there right now. Go to break, Tommy. Tommy, go to break. 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 This evening, what does this mean for the Nets? It means that you must see a healthy Kevin Durant as the rest of the season progress in order to officially acknowledge that they have a legitimate chance to win it all this season. Their big three has only played together seven total games this year. Wow. Only seven total games. And the catalyst is that man, Kevin Durant, the two-time champion, two-time finals MVP, the elite score, 50, 40, 90 kind of guy. I know we got enamored with the MVP conversation and the marvelous play of James Harden, and rightfully so. I've mm -hmm. called him the most unique basketball player in the history of the league years ago. I said this years ago, by the way. And Kyrie, like I said, his left hand needs his own channel on league pass. He throwing left hand passes behind the back. He doing up and under, hitting it off the glass. And so with all three of those guys eventually return, they're clearly, and I'm not breaking news, the head and shoulders favorite to win the East. So Jalen, you've always said that, that if all those three players are available, that they're the favorites to win the East. But do you still believe that even if they just become available and just start playing together right before the playoffs. Don't they need a little time together to gel on the court? I think if they're all healthy going into the playoffs, they're good. But what you say has merit because Harden, hamstring. KD, hamstring. These are unpredictable injuries, obviously. And so you're going to ease Kevin Durant into it. He's not going to come out and play 48 minutes tonight. But you want to ease him into it. But once he's healthy, and Harden and Kyrie, they're so explosive, Jacoby, and adding Blake Griffin, adding LaMarcus Aldridge. Joe Harris has become the best percentage catch and shoot player in the league from three. Like, they got a squad. Like, Sean Marks has done a terrific job putting their team together. It's going to be great to see KD return. We're off the next couple of days because the matches are on. We'll be back next week. Thanks for watching, Jalen and Jacoby.